There he is. What's going on? What's going on, man? How are you today, Jillo? Not much. How are you? I'm good, oh, man. man. I'm great. It's always great getting to see your face, man. How you been? How's everything going? Everything's going all right, man. No complaints. Uh, you know, just uh, doing the same thing as everybody else. Just staying at home, man. Yeah, that's good. Doing doing your part. Everyone inside right now. How's how's it going, man? I know uh, we had Dax on uh, a little over a week ago. Maybe two weeks ago. I don't know. Days are running together right now. Um, he was saying you guys got uh, some exercise bikes and a plan, a daily plan to stay in shape. Is that uh, what yeah. you guys have been doing to keep fit? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can. Uh, the club has been been awesome um, in supporting us in that, um, you know, and just trying to make sure we stay ready for um, when we're able to uh, restart things. Yeah, I mean, when that is, hopefully sooner rather than later. Is it is it just biking? Is it running? You do anything else? What's your what's your key to looking fit as can be, man? You, look, you haven't stopped working out a day since the stoppage, by the way. You look fit. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a lot of a lot of creative work, um, you know, from uh, the staff and you know us too, just kind of doing what what we know uh, keeps keeps us fit on the individual and then a collective basis as well. But uh, yeah, the bikes have helped a lot because um, you know you can you can get after it in your in your house. Mine's mine's literally in my bedroom right next to me. <laughs> You don't get nightmares waking up and seeing that thing like, no, no, I don't want to ride for another 12 miles today. No, actually, it, it helps because I can just, you know, bike while I watch TV or or whatever. So it, it actually helps pass the time as as opposed to the contrary. Um, you know, you can obviously get out and and, uh, and go on runs and whatnot. And you can, you can do individual ball work just as long as you're you're not, um, you know, with with groups of people. So I think that's probably the the toughest part because during the off season you can you can click up with with all the guys in your area and and play on a pretty consistent basis and get good numbers but you know um can't do that so yeah it's kind of just making sure individually we're we're fit well you said you're watching some shows while you work out what are you benching on uh so i finished i crushed the the third season of Ozark pretty much as soon as it came out. Um, is that good, man? Everyone's been everyone's been saying that's that's the must watch show right now. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Since you haven't watched it, I mean you're you're behind your sleep. It's yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I started. I got like five minutes in, and the missus was like, "Nope, I'm out." I was in. So this is gonna be like you know how this goes, man. When like you got the shows you watch together, right? And then you like get one on the side that you're like, all right. I'm just right. going to sneak away for a little bit and catch an episode real quick. That's where I'm at right now. It's good, though. I, I'll, I'll stick around for all three seasons. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. You might have to, I don't know, uh, sneak into the man cave and watch it, you know. <laughs> hey, this is it. This is, I'm literally in it right here. I'm going to tell her <laughs> that we – actually, it's weird. I've got a six-hour IG live with Jaleel right now, actually. i got to <laughs> sneak away and watch the whole first season. <laughs> Dude, uh, we, got, we, got, we told people we wanted to uh, – before we jumped on, we said we need to get uh, some questions in the comments – and uh Bates one oh three, he's trying to he's trying to get your attention here. He says, The man, the legend, the homie, Julian Anibaba, uh, the man looks sharp. Who cuts your hair? Yeah, that's that's my boy. That's that's my best friend Michael Bates. Uh there you go. played at Santa Clara together, you know, youth national team legend U seventeen legend. Everybody should know Michael Bates. Uh I know the name. Yeah, he uh go, man. he's he's asking a question he knows the answer to. I've been cutting my hair since college and I've been cutting his hair since college so uh, so a little birdie told me a little yeah. red-headed five foot seven birdie told yeah. me that in preseason yeah you were the man that everybody saw for haircuts is that right i mean i wouldn't say everybody but whoever needed a cut and wanted to to come through to my hotel room yeah i was uh kind of that that dude that was able to kind of uh, keep guys looking presentable when we're in training camp for however many weeks without barbers. So, so yeah. What's the name of your barbershop? You gotta have a name for it. No, no name. Uh, but uh, everyone asks how much I charge. Like how much I charge. The, yeah, there we go. Yeah, and the price is free ninety nine. So they. Oh, the man. Can, That's like why you're that. the homie right there. You give everyone the haircuts <laughs> for free, and. Uh, <laughs> I heard I heard there was one customer that was a repeat customer almost every other day. You must be talking about Hani. Must be talking about Hani. <laughs> Have to be yeah. talking about Hani. Apparently uh, he, he was in there uh, uh more than a fair share of his times. Is that right? 
I would cut his hair on a Friday, then you know Saturday or Sunday evening. He's like the the fade, the fade. We gotta we gotta do the fade again. So <laughs> we were we were, uh, we were uh, you know cutting cutting hair a lot during preseason, but. No, it, it helps. It helps a lot because obviously we we like to. Most of us, at least, like to like to look at least presentable while we're playing or while we're doing whatever we're doing. So it helps. It helps the guys bridge the gap whenever they're away from their barbers. I tell you what, the longer this thing goes, where we're not playing and everything slows down, the line at Jaleel Any Barbers. That's the name I've come up with. <laughs> So no, Andy Barbers is going to be uh, it's going to be around the corner because everybody's going to be coming out on that first day, getting everything done when everything opens up. And I can tell you what, I might be first yeah. in line. By the way, if we put it like this, if we start if we start training before barber shops open, I think I might be I might be busy. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I can't train today. Gary, I got to uh, I got to cut some hairs. I got to look after the boys. <laughs> <laughs> dude um dude, you got so you got one of the coolest stories man simply because you've seen so many different places played with so many different players it's like i feel like it's uh one or two degrees of separations from jaleel you know everybody in this league and um we actually have a commonality you know he's a unc guy right yep yep you transferred into unc after you started your collegiate career where santa clara yeah, that's not important. We'll talk about when it got good was when you went to UNC, right? That's when that's when everything went from good to great, UNC? I mean, I, I, st I still rep both, but we can write it out. <laughs> you, ended, you ended at the right my, school. We just, you put just it had like, a, put it like this. a pit degree, stop on the way. Degree, put it like this. My degree is from Chapel Hill, so. So it carries yeah. some weight. It just, yeah. it, it, it's like, it's. You should have it framed, by the way. Where is that? It should be. You got to get. You got to have that like front and center. That should be the backdrop. Never mind. Yeah, it's, in my, it's, it's framed. It's framed in my office for sure. That's that's a for sure thing. There we go. We got some uh, Kelly. Kelly's in there. She's a uh, good day to be a Tar Heel. We got some Tar Heels in there. Bob, um, told Shout people out. you wanted some questions. There we go. 2010, the glory year. I was there, maybe a couple of years before. We don't have to get into details on that. You make me feel old being in this. Still, you still look young as me. Hey, you're a good. You're a good man, right there. It's good lighting, is what it is. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, let's get let's get into some questions. I'm going to talk to you more about some of the teams you played on, but cool. first, some of the questions that uh, that we got here. First of all, we asked yesterday on IG Live uh, or for the IG Live, send us some questions ahead of time. Here's one from R O J A S Z. I'll let you try to say that. Favorite La Liga team? Who do you rep in La Liga? Um, yeah, it's always been. Barcelona for me and I know that's a cliche answer but I mean it's at the time that I was coming up when I was when I was a youngster it's pretty much impossible not to like the way that Messi plays so um that's why I always wrote Barcelona when it comes to La Liga I'm with you on that one man see even more in common it's Messi over Ronaldo for me what about this one from Nick uh ABD uh, underscore ABD underscore Favorite Prem club to follow? Who's your team in the Premier League? Let's see. It's that's an interesting one, um, and I've I've never really had a certain Prem club that I that I stick to, um, and that may that may not sit well with certain people. My brother's always been a Chelsea fan, so I uh, paid a lot of attention to Chelsea over the years. Um, you know, I liked Arsenal a lot um, as a kid, just following. Um, Henri following Conway. Yeah, some of some of the greats. The Untouchables were, were amazing to watch. So um it's difficult for me to pick one, but if I if I can pick two, I would say Chelsea and, and Arsenal. There we go. All right. I mean that's uh the correct answer was Liverpool, but that's fine. I mean that's that's cool. Just followed the brothers team, Chelsea. I am with you on that one. Um <laughs> let's talk about the teams you played for. So yeah. you started out getting drafted to the Chicago Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, we got, uh, let's see, I think we got some, uh, yeah, we got a sh sh Chicago Fire memorabilia in here. There you go, is that so, Dax? Or? That's Dax. I, so what I did okay. was I actually put him up on some coasters so he'd be a little bit taller. So Dax is a little bit taller back there on some coasters. So Chicago Fire, former club of his, former club of yours. What, right. was, uh, what was that feeling like? when you got drafted to go play for the fire and get to be there for the first couple of years, start us with that, that first moment for those who 
may never get that experience of being drafted. What's that like, man? Yeah, um, you know, the fire is always going to be a special club for, for myself. Chicago will always be a special place for, for me and my family just because it's is where it's where the foundation of um, my professional life started um, and where where I really learned how to how to make this a career. Um, you know, and when I was when I was drafted it was it was it was special, uh, obviously. Uh, my family was was right there with me. My my college coaches, um uh, Elmar and Carlos were right there with me as well. Uh, my boys, my roommates were right there with me as well. Um so it's uh it's it's a special time and, and all of our all of our lives, those those of us who have been drafted and, and of course you you never forget it simply because it's 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 the start. It's it's um the moment where um you know your your dream is is come to fruition um and then you know of course you have a a deep responsibility to to carry that as far as you as you possibly can so yeah, yeah so man. Chicago's, Chicago's an amazing place for me so then you you make your way to Seattle you go there I mean story club there um yeah. what was that like how'd you enjoy playing in Seattle I loved it I loved it Seattle was I would say where where I learned to um, take, um, I'd say winning and a competitive edge to 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 the next level, um, and where I learned how to push myself more and further than I had known um, how to before on an individual. Who pushed basis. you to do that? Who to like how, like who who made that happen for you? Like uh, the the overall environment, um, and you know that that team that we had in 2014 was was just a really amazing group um so you know it's like if you're if you are if you're not doing what you need to do nobody had time to or every everyone was everyone was working for the common good let me say that uh yeah the club and everyone knew that we're we're in a situation where where winning comes first and and you help your brothers do that um, and nothing else was, was acceptable. Um, you know, so it was, it was an environment where it wasn't like, okay, winning at all costs and everybody, uh, kind of throws camaraderie to the wayside. It was where the two came together. And that was, that was amazing. And I think that is, um, one of the, the true essence, essence of, of football, you know, it's, it's obviously a team sport and, you know, bonded together to, to achieve, um, you know, your goals at, at very, very high levels while doing that, um, while meshing everyone together is a very difficult thing to do. And I think that's what uh, all of us are in love with in one way or another. So that's where I saw it, I saw it come together. Um, guys on an individual basis, that helped me out a lot there. Um, Zach Scott was huge for me. Um, oh, the legend. The yeah. Free, free MLS sounder legend and this MLS sounder legend, Zach Scott. Yeah. Yeah, he's he was just amazing um on a daily basis he would literally um you know like stay after practice and help me out with with various aspects of my game um one mainly to uh you know aerial aerial challenges he was he was amazing at it and i was okay. literally watching him go hey oh zach he helped me out with this hey, <laughs> teach me that. the thing you do where you never lose a header <laughs> yeah so yeah, he he helped me out a lot, but it goes the list goes on. Abafemi Martins was 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 huge, um, hugely inf influential for me, uh, being being Nigerian and you know playing with him and you know Phil one of the greatest. Yeah, so it goes on and on. Not Andy Rose Man. was one of the best friends, and you know we bonded like like none other that year as well. So it was just a very special time and. Uh, we were very uh, successful that year, um, and yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah, man, that's cool. So, what I love about you, even just in the short time I've gotten to watch you train here, you talk and share information and encouragement more than anybody else I've ever seen in a long time. Right, I'll put it that way. Maybe not ever in a very long time, but it's good. It's it's encouraging to the younger guys. It's knowing when to get into somebody, when to lift somebody up, when to tell someone, cut it out, worry about playing, right? Mm -hmm. Have you always been that way? Or was that something you grew into over the course of your career? I've just I've been always, that vocal leader. 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, shout out Michael Balogun, by the way. He was one of my homies. Uh, there we go. You see the, yeah. Yeah. Got the group chat right there. <laughs> Residency homies in there. Uh, it's, I've always, I've always been that way. I don't, I don't know, ever since I was, I was a young kid, um, you know, talking and communication and um, I guess kind of just uh, expressing myself verbally uh, while expressing myself, um, you know, obviously through playing has, has been something that has always come hand in hand for, for me. Um, I don't know. I've never, I never separated the two when I was, when I was a kid. So I guess it's just, you know, something that's always been part of, part of my game. Um, you know, I think it, it, it helps obviously to, to talk through things because, you know, soccer is so it's so subjective um there are very few if any set plays so the only real way to to know um or to to let other people know what you're going to do and then know what what they're going to do is is to talk through it sometimes um but of course you can't you know there's 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 aspects of the game where 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 uh um illusion is 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 part of what we're trying to do as well but Overall, yeah, communication has has been huge, huge for me, and that's and that's how you build bonds quick. Yeah, man, it's like our bond right here, communicating right here today. Here we can go. communicate with the uh, with the the comment section right here. I had a question a minute ago that said, uh, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, or Switch. What do you game on? Switch. Switch. Yeah. What's your What's your game you like to play? Mario Kart. Mario Kart. All right. Yeah. Anybody else give you any challenge on the team? Mm, I haven't played against anyone on the team, but I'm willing to to stack up against the best of them. So take all any and all challengers. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Um, who would you say is the uh, the best FIFA player on the team? Best FIFA player on the team? I know for sure it's not Derek Jones. I know that <laughs> for, for a for a fact. He's gonna be mad when he sees this. <laughs> I know. I know that for a fact because Hani's been giving him five six. Six one, three wow. zero. Yeah, and skunking and them too. Still. And they get off the sticks three zero at halftime. I mean, you know, and they play all the time. So I I can definitely say Derek is not the best. Hani could be the best. I don't know, but yeah, I just know those two play all the time, and Derek ain't never winning. That's all I know. Yeah, there's a there's a good question here in the chat. Said, who is the defender? Did you look up to growing up in your career? But maybe even before you went, somebody, let's do this two parts. Okay. One, before you became a professional. And then two, when you became a professional and you saw how other guys played, you're like, I want to be like this guy. Um, to be honest, there was no one that I said straight up, I want to be like him through it, through and through. Uh, but there are a lot of players that I tried to take just like snippets of, of their games. Uh, one thing that I learned from my dad when I was young uh, is that there's nothing on the soccer pitch that has a copyright on it. If there's anything. Ooh, say that again. That was deep. Oh, that's, well, I've been getting stuff from my dad like that since before I could walk. Uh, that was good. Say that again. Yeah, my dad would always say there's there's nothing on the soccer pitch that has a copyright on it. So if if anybody has either aspect of their game or their attitude or their swag or the way they carry themselves or, you know, the way they, they bring down their first touch or whatever it is, there's nothing that says you can't take that in and emulate it or add it, just add it to your game. So that's like how I've always kind of envisioned, um, like building, building my game. Um, I never was like, okay, I want to be this person. I would say, so for example, one of the defenders that I looked up to uh, when I would watch uh, football before I was a pro was Puyol, just because oh, yeah. of his like passion, you know. Tenacious. Yeah, like he would make a, he would make a game saving tackle. He would get up, he would, he would sell, he would celebrate. And then he's like organizing. <laughs> yeah, and right. Get, get get your box, right. You know? So that's that's one aspect that that i tried to take from him but i never tried to play exactly like him you know yeah and, um and then when i became a pro uh the defender that like carried me along i uh, was Corey gibbs he uh yeah he's the man he, yeah 
uh, you know, national team player, played played all through Europe and, and then obviously in the, in the MLS. Um, so he he took me under his wing like that the first couple of days of preseason. Um, it was a wrap. So he he would teach me the intri uh, the intricacies of of the game and not only the game but um, the professional side of things and and what to look out for and and whatnot. So and then that kind of what that started a uh, uh, I guess cycle if you will. So all the younger guys that came came up after me, I'd always tell them like, look, when you come into a locker room, try to try to find at least um, one older guy that you can bounce all your ideas off of and that keeps that keeps uh your perspective broader than than it would had you not was that was one of those guys in seattle marco papa who's in the chat right now saying what's papa, up that's my boy shout out marco papa we uh so papa and i we played we played in chicago together first that's and, right in chicago uh, yeah yep yeah so uh that's that's my boy from time shout out shout out crack what's up you got Brandon um, Bay in there. He's in the chat too, saying what's yeah, up. Boy, that's my guy. What's Minneapolis up? SC former yeah. alum. Yeah, he's, my time when I was up there in Minnesota, that was uh, that was the guy, and then he took it to the next level yeah. last year in New England. Yeah, you know, holding it down the starting spot, right back. Everybody need to watch out for Brandon Bay on the right side. He's he's making a name and a career for himself. Uh, people have learned that. You probably took him. Is, is was Brandon By just right here under your wing? You just took him he, right here. He, said, Come here, follow he was me. There, man, he was there. He's he's one of the. He was one of the younger guys who, who really wanted to learn, but also too, he didn't let anybody push him around. So, um, he reminded me of of uh, some of the some of the, the ways that we went about things when I was young. Um, so, yeah, we we built a good bond too. So that's one of my boys. There you go. Who are you bonded with here at Nashville? Who some of the guys you connected with right off the bat? Uh, yeah, it's it's been good because our group is so like, uh, the energy is so good, you know. And the locker room is is uh is very it's a warm place to be. So so the connections are flowing. Um, you know, uh, first I would say early on, uh, even before I got to Nashville, me and uh, Dominic Baji were were connecting and linking up and. And talking and and bouncing ideas off each other, so that was that was from Rip um, Romney and I were uh, you know have built have built a good bond. He's he's a good dude and a great player, obviously. Um, you know, there's the list goes on. Derek Jones is is somebody that I always kind of make fun of and and the uh, second best FIFA <laughs> player on the team, right? No, 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 not not the second best. Not definitely. even the second. Not no, Are you not sure second, your friend after this? Hold on, there's there's a very important distinction here. Okay. He's not second. I can't say that he's second best. He's just definitely not the best. So that, <laughs> he could be he he's not the best. So he could be the worst, or he could be second best. I don't know. He'd be two through twenty eight. Anywhere there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So no, nah, we always we always go back and forth, and I'm sure he probably he's probably gonna uh, either come on here or or text me some some BS later, but we always go back and forth, but, but he's a Derek, really you can always player. come in and defend yourself in the, in the comment section. That's, uh, that's where we'll have you be right now. And then we'll have him come on soon enough. And, and I'm sure he might have, it might be like a, like a battle. Like he, he goes and then you have to come back and then you go. And then we let the people decide who wins the trash talking battle. Oh, I got, I got Derek on lock on that. He, <laughs> so yeah, but no, in all seriousness, now we, uh, we got we got good rapport and he's a good kid and and a great and a great talent and a great footballer so um you know like i said the ener the energy is is just dope in the locker room and it's it's fun to to report to every day um that's yeah. important man just loving going to work and loving being with the group right yeah yeah so, you grind for so long with the guys and you got to like each other or else you get sick of each other and then the soccer's miserable yeah yeah so so that's that's a that's a big part of of things, and um, you know, uh, obviously, you can see that uh, that was very very much in the forefront of of uh, of their minds when they were when they were putting the group together. Yeah, no, it's good to say one good characters, and then somehow they got you. So, no, you were one of the first ones they were after. <laughs> Everybody loves you, Jaleel. We love you. Thanks for uh, for coming on, man. Real quick before we let you go. Um, anything you uh, you want to say to any of the uh, the supporters that are watching this right now that will watch this? Um, you got the uh, you got the floor. I'll give you the last word. 
Yeah. Um, just shout out to all the supporters that, uh, you know, have been, have been uh, staying strong with us through, through this difficult time and obviously through our inaugural season. Um, and a special shout out to those of our supporters who are uh, healthcare workers or for frontline employees. Those of you that work at supermarkets and, um, and whatnot, we, we really appreciate you. Uh, the world and the nation is leaning on you guys right now and um, you guys are a backbone. So, Appreciate every every last one of you guys, and um, yeah, shout out to shout out to everybody showing love. Oh man, couldn't have said it by myself, Jaleel. We appreciate the time today. Thank you so much, my man. Yeah, take care, my brother. Hope to see you soon, man. Stay fit, stay well, stay safe. All right. Sounds good. You too. Ozark season three, Doc. You got it. Next time we talk, we'll be talking all about it. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. See you, Jaleel. Thanks, man. All right. Yep. Yeah, late.